Hello, beautiful brothers and sisters. This is Virginia. Let me open with prayer. Dear loving Heavenly Father, may you have all the glory for this video. May you speak and not me. And may everyone who comes to watch it be blessed. Let me present the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus loves you, and he wants you to spend eternity with him, but that cannot happen unless you are born again. So first repent. Admit that you're a sinful creature, like we all are. Then believe that Jesus is who he says he is, fully God, fully man. He came to earth, lived a perfect and sinless life. He shed his blood on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins. All of your sins, past, present, and future, no matter what you have done. For the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. He died, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day. All you have to do is believe that to be born again without adding in any of your own good works or trying to be good. It has nothing to do with belonging to any church, being baptized, practicing any religion. The moment you believe is like a personal encounter in your heart between you and God himself, where you call on his name. You might say, come into my life, Lord Jesus, or Jesus, I believe you, save me. Whatever it is, talk to God. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the moment you do, you are born again. You will receive the Holy Spirit who will indwell you forever because your salvation is eternal. You cannot lose it. So I hope you have believed because the alternative, not believing, means that you will spend eternity in hell. And nobody wants that. So please believe. My email address is in the description box or you can leave a comment below. Well, the first thing I wanted to mention is that there have been a, 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 a wide variety of comments on my channel. And many, many, many times people have written, no man knows the hour nor the day. That is true. That is scripture. I have never set an hour or a day for the rapture. All I've explained to you is that God gave the date December 21st, 2022. And so please do not write that on this channel. It just takes up my time unnecessarily. There's no reason for you to write it. Also, if you do not believe in a pre-trib rapture, or if you do not believe in once saved, always saved, that also is, is going to be questioned on my channel. I I don't think you should comment if you are going to say it's not a pre-trib rapture or once saved, always saved isn't the truth. So it would be best for you not to comment. What I want to talk to you about today is the sequence of events as we approach the end. Of course, nobody knows for sure, but I want to comfort you because it's very, very close. And what this is, is the timing of the events and how it will um, unroll. So the first thing to know is the tribulation cannot start until after the rapture. Therefore, the tribulation cannot start until the covenant, the seven-year covenant of peace is confirmed between many. So let me just keep going. Furthermore, to confirm a covenant, you must have a covenant. And to have a covenant, you must have a reason for a covenant. And to have a reason for this covenant is very obvious. Worldwide chaos and war. We know the rapture will happen simultaneously with this event of world chaos and war. Furthermore, we know our Lord will not allow his children to perish within a worldwide nuclear event knowing that they have all been waiting for the day of the rapture, the day they will see the Lord in the clouds, knowing they've all been waiting for this moment to be raptured. Every good and perfect gift is from above, 
and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. I would say the rapture is coming down from the Father of lights. And that's James 1.17. And so it is true that if, if you die in a nuclear war, you will still go to heaven. But our Father knows his children's hearts, wanting to see the day of the rapture. And Psalm 37.4 says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Furthermore, the rapture will fulfill this his purpose and will and plan for this world. He wants his children to go in the rapture all at once. And this will show the world the Lord's hand. Now, as I said, we must look at the chronological order of events. Always let scripture interpret scripture. It says in Daniel 9.27 that he will confirm a covenant with many. A covenant is an agreement between parties who make binding promises to each other and work together to reach a common goal. They're often accompanied by oaths and ceremonies. The covenant made will define obligations and commitments. Now this man will confirm the covenant between many. And the definition of confirmed, confirming, confirms is to give approval, to ratify, confirm a treaty, to make firm or firmer, strengthen. And this is exactly how J.D. Farag describes that particular word in Daniel 9, 27, to make it more of what it already is, reinforce to administer the right of confirmation or to give new assurance of this. So this man will have to stop this major conflict long enough to get the world leaders to agree to talk. This is going to take time. Remember, at this point, he's just a man, a world leader himself. However, he will be very persuasive. So we know that at this point, he will be known. He will be the man with plan the power to pull all the world leaders together to stop the wars and talk things out. We know that the beginning of the tribulation is when this covenant is signed. When this covenant is signed, you can start the clock on the tribulation. Then you will know who the Antichrist is publicly. And here's Daniel 9:27. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. Now, if you read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, three, uh, verses 3 and 4, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is often taken out of context, because Paul is trying to tell them that that day has not happened, because he has not gone into the temple and proclaimed himself as God. Then he will be revealed. What, what Paul is speaking about is the point in Israel at which they will understand who he truly is. He is not who they think he is. He is not their savior. He is the man of sin. Well, we know that will not happen until the middle of the tribulation when he goes into the temple and proclaims himself as God. Often many will, people will say, well, we, you can't know who the Antichrist is until he is revealed, quoting this scripture above. As you can see, they twist the scriptures and they do not know the scriptures because this does not happen until mid-tribulation. But you will truly know who the Antichrist is when he confirms the covenant with many. So the Bible does not say you cannot know who the Antichrist is. So I'm saying all this, we know that Long before the tribulation starts, there has to be conflict, major conflict. 
This man of sin will have to come on the scene and orchestrate unity in the midst of division, pulling together world leaders and stopping worldwide chaos long enough to get them to agree to terms. This kind of thing does not happen overnight. Just look at the war in Ukraine. How long have they been trying to get those two presidents to sit down and talk? Now imagine this is a huge conflict. Yes, he will be very persuasive and empowered, but it will take a little time. The tribulation cannot start until the covenant is made. Then in saying this, we know the rapture happens before the tribulation. It is a pre-trib rapture. So in conclusion, the rapture could be at any moment, literally. So to summarize, world war begins, there's chaos. The rapture happens simultaneously. The Antichrist comes on the scene, brokers peace, reinforces a seven-year covenant of peace, draws together world leaders to ratify the covenant, and the day it is signed signals the beginning of the tribulation. This is what I believe. So thank you for coming. I hope this has encouraged you to know just how close the rapture really is. It truly is. Thank you for coming, like I said, and God bless you. I love you all. I'll see you soon. If there's another video to be made, God will show me and I will post it. Until then, bye for now.